Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm feeling a little naked without concealer and lip product, but I have a new face product that I'm really excited to test out with y'all, so I thought it'd be fun to do on camera, kind of give you the breakdown of the product details, launch date, prices, all that good stuff. Also, if you're wondering, if you end up seeing little flecks of white, I do still have paint in my hair. I've washed it twice since painting, and I somehow keep managing to miss certain sections. I've been like combing it out, but it's just... It's just in there. I mean, so yeah, we're just gonna go with it. Today we are gonna be talking about the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Powder. This was the packaging for like PR presentation purposes, so it's not gonna be sold like this in store, but I had to share it just because it's so cute. Like, look at it. So here are the actual powders. There are eight shades total. I believe Sugar Cookie is translucent, but then the other seven do have an actual like shade to them as well as a dual ended brush. The powder retails for $34. Inside you get 20 grams. So just for a side-by-side -side comparison with the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder. I just chose to use this one because when it comes to baking, I feel like this is pretty much the most commonly used on YouTube. In the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, you get 29 grams. This one retails for $38, whereas the Huda Beauty retails for $34. And then a few other quick comparisons. We have the Cover Effects Illuminating Loose Setting Powder. This one, you only get 10 grams and it retails for $35. I realize the Patrick Star Patrick's Powder is sold out now, but I'm sure a lot of you guys have it. This one you get 30 grams and this one is the same price or it was the same price as the Huda Beauty powder. So I'm sure a lot of people will look at this and think that it's bulky but personally for me I actually really like the square more just because whenever I lay it in my drawer sometimes a lot of these ones will like kind of roll back and forth like a little wheel whereas these guys you could have them stacked up like this and they're not moving anywhere. Okay so we talked about the packaging the price let me go ahead and do a quick shade breakdown. So let's go ahead and start off with sugar cookie first. So when you open it, you do have this little lid, which I'll definitely be keeping on mine just to keep the powder from flying everywhere. But then even after that lid, I love this. If you guys are familiar with like the pure eye polishes that have that mesh netting, this is very similar to that. There's just this little bouncy mesh net that really helps the powder from like kicking up everywhere. It's really easy to kind of like stamp your brush in there. Whereas like a plastic sifter, you still kind of have to swirl it around. The actual powder literally feels like silk. It is like so micronized and just silky. It just like melts right into my fingers. It's amazing and my nails need to be reshaped. So here is sugar cookie and then here is cupcake. As you can see, cupcake definitely has a little bit more beige in there. Not too, too deep, but just a couple steps up deeper. After the shade cupcake, we have pound cake. This one looks a little bit more yellow than the previous shade. And then for an even more yellow shade, we have banana bread, which looks pretty similar to the Ben Nye banana powder. Unfortunately, I decluttered that, so I can't really do a side-by-side. -side. Maybe slightly softer in color compared to the Ben Nye banana powder. Honestly, it's been forever since I used that. It was just way too yellow for me, so I'd gotten rid of it, but actually maybe this next one is a little bit more similar. This one is called Blondie. Yeah, this is looking pretty yellow. Moving on to the final three shades, we have Kanafa, which this one is definitely yellow. And then the two deepest shades, this one, I love the name. It's called Cinnamon Bun, which I think is so, so cute. Okay, so just using a damp beauty blender, I am going to go in and press my concealer in as I always would. I took a mixture of the Urban Decay All Nighter as well as my Bare Minerals Bare Pro Concealer, just a couple little dots of that to get the coloring right. For my baking powder, I'm really interested in trying sugar cookie, which I'm guessing is the translucent one, but just in case it's not, we're gonna go ahead and take a mixture of sugar cookie and then cupcake. So the two lightest shades here. Let me pop these bad boys back open, and we are going to be applying it with the bake and blend brush. Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and do sugar cookie on one side. So taking the bake side first, I'm just going to press this Oh, this is nice. See, it's not like really puffing out oh, a little bit, but not too bad. That could be from my fan. I'm gonna tap off the excess. Pressing that on, I'm gonna go into the corners as well just because I get shadowing right there. All right, so we're gonna leave that on. Then I'm just going to kind of dust this brush off. Now go on this side where my concealer is already creasing because my under eye wrinkles hate me. We're gonna go in with the shade Cupcake. All right, so going in with cupcake on this side in the exact same areas. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do around 
my nose. <coughs> wow, and right here on the creases of my mouth too, because those are areas that my concealer always wants to shift or my foundation and then right here below my chin. Wow, this smells like, it definitely kind of has like a perfume scent, a little bit of a very, very faint like rose. It smells good, it's not overpowering, it's not like a dusty, rosy, like grandma type of rose smell, it's just a fresh rose. Okay, and then a little bit right here where I have those bigger pores and because my forehead has been getting a little bit on the oily side lately. Okay, so once again for reference before we dust it off, on this side I have sugar cookie, which is the lightest color, and then on this side I have cupcake. I honestly don't see much of a difference. Let me go ahead and pop my finger in both two just so you can really see. So here we have sugar cookie, and then on this side we have cupcake. Okay, so it's been four minutes. Now I'm gonna go in with the blend side of my brush and just lightly blend this powder out. So right off the bat, I can definitely see that it has a subtle blurring quality just because my nose looks very smoothed out. I probably could have gone in with a little bit more right here. But any areas where I had enlarged pores, it really seemed to smooth those areas out. Looking good so far. I just have very naturally crepey under eyes. I don't really think there's any powder that's gonna magically smooth those out. It just comes with age. I mean, I guess the only way to really fix it is with fillers. All right, so after getting everything baked in and blended, while the swatches didn't look that different, I have to say in person, I definitely prefer the look of cupcake on my under eyes. In person, this side just looks like it has a little bit more coverage and is a tinge brighter. So if you are similar in skin tone to me, I think you would be happier with cupcake. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my blush and bronzer and I'll be right back with some baking powder up under my contour. Maybe we can see if I can chisel this little round head of mine a little bit. I think I'm gonna go in with pound cake, a very pale type of like bone beige with like a tint of yellow in it. And just because I'm curious, I'm gonna go in with a damp beauty blender. Well, slightly, slightly damp beauty blender. It's kind of been air drying here for a little bit. So I'm just going to take some of this and so just right down here where my face always wants to gobble up my makeup for whatever reason. So let me go ahead and zoom you into my wrinkly glory here. Everything is still looking really good. Nothing is getting like wet or changing color. Sometimes when you set a wet concealer with a powder, it'll like suddenly oxidize and your under eyes are a million shades deeper than the rest of your face. Well, not deeper, but almost like more orange. It's weird. I've only had it happen to me a couple of times, but it basically ruins your entire face and you have to start all over. I'm not experiencing any of that. I really, really love the look of it. I definitely think it did smooth out my under eyes. I really like what it did to my nose too, just because I've been having issues with pores there and it really did blur out that area. It looks really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and dust this guy off. I'm gonna go back in with that bake and blend brush and just give this a quick little sweep away. Ooh, that looks really nice. This powder gives like a nice airbrush finish. This area looks much smoother then up yonder. Now I'm wanting to just like apply it all over my whole face because I mean, who doesn't like smooth looking airbrush skin? I really love this end of the brush. This side is okay, honestly. I think next time for my under eyes, I would probably go in with a sponge just because I really do like having the pointed end of like a sponge or beauty blender, whatever type of sponge you're using, Eco Tools Morphe. Um, that's just my preferred method. I don't think this area looks too heavy or cakey. I just dropped Howard off at the groomers and two people told me that I have paint in my hair, so I should probably get that taken care of tonight. All right, so it's been about three hours since first applying this powder, and I have to say, I did not think I was going to say this. Honestly, I thought I was just gonna be like, oh yeah, it's another good translucent setting powder, nothing really like sets it apart from the rest, but the powder has told me otherwise. I actually leave for Florida tomorrow for a week, and I can already tell you that I'm going to be taking both cupcake and pound cake. As much as I love my Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder, this does give me the brightness under my eyes, but this does not give me like this airbrushed finish that this powder does. I'm definitely going to keep using this because I love this for my under eyes. I don't notice the biggest difference from like my under eye area, like versus the Huda Beauty and the Laura Mercier. But when it comes to like my pores and the actual finish of it, the Huda Beauty one gives like a total smooth, like buttery airbrush finish. 
I love it. So I could probably pack this one and pound cake because cupcake I reserve more for my under eyes, but pound cake was the perfect color to kind of like set under my contour. And I think I could go in even like down the bridge of my nose and on my forehead, just any areas that I have like those larger pores that I want to conceal. It's almost like a primer in a powder. It just smooths it out. It gives like such a buttery, silky finish. I'm very impressed, I love it. I also love the fact that it has that mesh netting versus the sifter, but I'm still standing by the fact that I think I do prefer pressing it on with a wet or damp sponge versus the brush, but I do like the blend end of the brush. That is it for this one. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I would love to have you here. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.